Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. NFL Week 2 continuing on with another game. Panthers at Seahawks. This line, Seattle minus 5.5. Went up to 6. It's back down to 5.5. Uh, total sitting at 42. Let's roll. Welcome to The Source. The Source. Source. Get the source. So public's all over Seattle in this one. Over 80% of the tickets in on the Seahawks. Line was five and a half. Then it was six for a couple days. Now it looks like it's back down to five and a half as of this morning. Uh, but Bryce Young was just ruled out. So we'll have to wait and see what this line does. So let's start with Geno Smith. Uh, Geno Smith showed up in a big way last week in Detroit, completing over 78% of his passes, 328 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, 116.3 passer rating, looking nice. Uh, I wanted to throw my phone when he took that horrible sack at the end of the game, though. Uh, if you had Seahawks plus four and a half with me, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But whatever. Played great. Got the win. And what makes it even more impressive is Geno Smith did it without run support. I know if you were watching the Red Zone channel, you saw Kenneth Walker score a couple touchdowns. Then you see the final score, 37-31. You're assuming Kenneth Walker had a big game. He didn't at all. Just 17 carries for 43 yards, 2.5 yards per attempt. And Seattle needs that to change this week. Yes, they're at home. Yes, they're the better team in this matchup, and they should win this game. But the weakness of the Carolina Panthers defense so far seems to be stopping the run. They're 31st in run defense DVOA, 21st in yards per carry allowed, and 21st in adjusted line yards. So the Seahawks would be smart to try to iron those problems out in their run game before this matchup. This is important because if you look at Carolina's numbers against the pass so far this year, yo, the Panthers can defend the pass. They're 5th in DVOA, 8th in yards per attempt, 3rd uh, in adjusted sack rate. Carolina's getting to the quarterback. Look at Derek Carr's stat line against the Panthers last week. Now, I know Derek Carr... People have mixed feelings about Derek Carr right now, and that's whatever. But we did see him put up a decent game statistically against the Titans in week one. Last week against the Panthers, just 228 yards, 6.3 yards per attempt, no touchdowns, one pick, 65.5 passer rating. This Panthers pass rush should be good this year. Keep in mind, defense may have had a down year last year, but in 2021, the Carolina pass rush was third in the NFL in adjusted sack rate. They had a very good pass rush in 2021, and basically all the same pass rushers are there. Hassan Reddick is obviously gone. He plays for the Eagles now. But they did bring in Justin Houston to add another piece to those edge rushers. So it's not crazy to think that the Panthers are going to have one of the better pass rushers in the NFL this year. So Seattle needs to have that run game working with Kenneth Walker in this game. Or Geno Smith could be in for a really long day. Now on the other side of the ball, this is where it gets really tough to make a case for Carolina. Uh, Bryce Young off to a terrible start in the bottom two or three of the league in basically every statistical category. I don't blame it all on him. Uh, he's on a terrible offense. He doesn't have much help there, but he hasn't passed the eye test either. I mean, running himself into dumb sacks, bad decision making. It's been bad. Part of me wants to think Andy Dalton will actually step into this Panthers offense and make it look better. Bryce Young just isn't ready. Uh, but the thing is, I don't know how much I even trust Andy Dalton anymore. And like I said, the surrounding pieces on the Carolina offense are just not good. I know when it comes to the Seahawks pass defense, there's a bit of a panic right now. I mean, they're off to a terrible start. 31st in pass defense DVOA, 30th in yards per attempt allowed, 29th in adjusted sack rate. But I'm not really worried about the Seahawks pass defense, to be honest. They were a decent pass defense last year, and they added Bobby Wagner and Devin Witherspoon. I find it hard to believe that this unit got worse after adding pieces. And look at the matchups they've had to start this season everyone was like oh my god Seahawks how did you let Stafford and the Rams offense do that to you well you know what we just saw Stafford and the Rams offense give the 49ers defense problems so all of a sudden that week one performance against the Rams doesn't look nearly as bad also Witherspoon didn't even play in that game and then the following week last week they're on the road in Detroit and Jared Goff goes off if you remember Jared Goff at home in Detroit was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL last year he had the third highest passer rating in the entire league at home in Detroit so I'm not giving up on this Seahawks pass defense. I think it bounces back in a huge way this week against Carolina. Now, if you're planning on taking the points with Carolina, this is your angle right here. The run game. Panthers offenses look like absolute shit. I'm not going to argue that. But you know what? They've been getting the run game going a bit. Panthers just had 5.3 yards per carry on the Saints last week. Saints run defense under Dennis Allen has been good as hell. Panthers, they have a little bit of a run game brewing out there. So as far as what I'm betting, I have to apologize. So the Bryce Young news broke right when I started recording. So if I had known that there was going to be a quarterback change and I was going to wait it out, I wouldn't have done this video, but I already started it. So uh, I'm, I'm on the Seahawks. At five and a half, I'm on the Seahawks. But now that this Bryce Young news just dropped, dropped about 30 minutes ago, 
Uh, if this line gets all the way up to seven, I think the value might shift over to Carolina. So if it gets back up to seven, I might have to reconsider. But as of right now, it's at five and a half. So give me Seattle minus five and a half. I'll let you know on the live show Sunday morning what the final decision is. But if it's sitting at six or less, I'm most likely siding with the heavy public on this one and laying it with Seattle. Uh, but like I said, let you know on Sunday morning. If you want my top bets, parlays of the day, uh, if you want to join the Discord or you want to get on the NFL against the spread giveaway competition, this week's winner gets, uh, gets a signed David Montgomery jersey. So if you're interested in that, head over to kylecrums.com. Information's right on the homepage. NFL week three, a lot of good matchups on the board today. There's a lot of betting value. I'm going in this weekend. Uh, remember to bet responsibly, and I'll talk to you in the Discord.